Did you know we can create artificial fog inside of Lightroom Classic? Let me show you how it's done. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So this is our RAW file. Obviously, this already has a little bit of fog in the distance. But what we want to do for this image is to add some thin layer of fog just above the surface right there in the back. This is a super cool effect and it's super easy to do. First, however, we want to do the basic adjustments so we can get a better idea where we want to add the fog specifically. Let's open up the basic panel and right away I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This lessens the contrast and less contrast for this scene is kind of helpful. So I want to continue working on that. I'm going to immediately bring down the contrast very, very slightly. And this already has some kind of fake fog effect. If you look closely, you could make it stronger by bringing down the contrast even further, but that's not what we want. Instead, let's try to work on the exposure. What I want to do is to bring down the highlights and see what's happening. Doing this will mostly affect the sky and we will get a little more detail out of the trees, which I think is quite nice. To add a little contrast back, I'm going to bring down the shadows. This will give us some more punch right here in the foreground, but also right here for the areas of the trees. For the same effect, we could try bringing down the blacks. Doing this, you always want to keep a close eye on the histogram, but this is kind of looking like a high key image with all the tonal values being on the right side. So we have all the room we need to bring down the blacks and just add a little more punch to this image. Then I do want to bring up the texture because it's nice having some more details. And I'm also going to increase the clarity. Usually I'm going for negative clarity, but for this scene, it just helps to make the subject in the distance pop a little more. It will give the reflection some more attention and it also helps with the foreground. So that's the reason for me to quite heavily punch the clarity up. Now, as I said in the intro, I want to add a thin layer of fog just above the surface right there in the back. However, we can set this up already by bringing down the dehaze globally. And as the name suggests, bringing down the dehaze will add some more atmospheric haze to this image. I would highly suggest to not overdo it because the dehaze light is very, very powerful. Just a tiny amount like this should be enough. And you can immediately see how this image got a little more foggy. What I want to do else is to bring down the vibrance. I want to keep this image on the colder side without much color tones besides some blue tones. That's also the reason for me to change the white balance at this point. This image is a little too warm. And to change that, I'm going to simply bring down the temperature a little bit. I think right about here looks great. So that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's take a quick look at the before and after comparison. You can see not that much has changed. It's a little bit colder. We do have a little more contrast overall. And the image just looks sharper. However, these were just the basic adjustments setting up the image for further editing. So what we want to do next is the masking part. And here is where we really can change this image, making it look like we want it to. Let's start with something simple. I want to change the foreground right here. And what I want to do to the foreground is to add way more contrast. So let's bring up the contrast slider. At the same time, I'm going to bring up the highlights all the way up. And let's also introduce some whites. Again, doing this, I'm keeping a close eye on the histogram because I don't want to underexpose, but I also don't want to overexpose and lose vital details that way. However, this is looking really, really good. What I want to do else for the foreground, I want to bring down the temperature further, introducing blue tones in this particular area, giving the eyes some blue shimmering effect. Then I'm heading down into the effects panel right here. And I'm going to bring up the texture because I want this area with the eyes to be especially sharp. So let's raise the texture and let's also raise the clarity. That works great. 
Now let's try separating that tree in the distance from the foggy background. I'm trying to do that using a linear gradient, just covering pretty much all the background like this. And I simply want to bring down the blacks. As you can see, we can bring the blacks down all the way without risking underexposure, but we're adding some nice punch right here. At the same time, I want to bring up the highlights. This is kind of the opposite of what we did in the intro with the basic adjustments. However, I feel like this is looking just better at this point. So sometimes in the beginning, you're going in one direction and further on in the editing, you're going in the other direction. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. I do feel we can bring some more attention to the tree in the distance. So what I want to do now is to create a new luminance range mask. And with the eyedropper active, I'm just clicking right in here, which is nicely selecting the darker tones. However, I don't want to affect the foreground. So we need to subtract this area from this mask. So just click on subtract, choose linear gradient, and now create a linear gradient going up like this to only affect the background of the image. Here, all we need to do to make this tree line in the back pop a little more is to bring down the exposure. Right about here looks good. I'm also going to bring down the saturation because I feel like the trees are a little too blueish. So right about here is looking very good. And right here at this point, we are starting to lose a little bit too much of that fog we had originally. So I want to add some artificial fog using masks. Actually, we just need one mask and let's create a radial gradient. As I said, we want to create a fog line just above the surface to make it look natural. So we're going to create a radial gradient, make it very, very wide covering the whole width of the image, but at the same time, we want to keep it thin. And I'm going to place it just above the surface, right about here. I think we can make it a little bit thicker. It's only really important to cover the whole width. So all we need to do here to set up the fog, we can increase the blacks, which is kind of the first step. Then we're heading down into the effects tab once more, and what we want to do is to play with some negative dehaze. So let's just bring it down. We can drop it quite heavily. And at this point, you can see it's looking a little bit strange. This can be fixed by making this radial gradient just a little bigger. And I also earlier said bringing down the dehaze makes the area brighter. This is a problem which is very, very visible in this case. So how can we fix that? we can simply pull down the exposure until it looks fitting to the rest of the environment. So I'm just going to bring it down a little more right about here. And that's it. So let me deactivate this mask in particular to see how the fog effect applies to this image. Before, after. And with just this tiny radial gradient, we have created a very, very natural looking fog effect right here. So let's continue finishing this image. What I want to do next is to create another radial gradient and I want to cover the reflection in the water like this. I want to make it a little more visible, so I'm going to use some clarity, making the reflection pop. And finally, let's add a linear gradient coming up from, from the bottom part. And I want to create some kind of vignetting effect by simply bringing down the exposure. Okay, and that's it for the masking. We can take a quick look at the before and after comparison again. So here's the image without the masks, and here it is with the masks applied. Quite a transformation as you can see. At this point, we are pretty much done editing this image. What's missing now is the color grading. Since we don't have much color left in this image, I'm not going to touch the color mixer. Instead, I'm gonna head straight into the split toning. Here we can enhance the blue tones a little more. Let's start with the highlights. Usually for the highlights, I'm applying a warm color tone, but in this scene, it does not make sense. We don't have any warmth in this image whatsoever. So instead of a warm color tone, I'm going to apply a cold color tone for the highlights. 
set up the hue and bring up the saturation only a tiny amount, otherwise it's way too obvious. And I'm going to repeat this for the midtones. Again, set up the hue, just looking for a nice cold color somewhere around here and bring up the saturation only a tiny amount. Perfect. And the same for the shadows. Set up the hue and bring up the saturation a bit. Done. If you want, you can work on the colors a little more in the calibration tab. Here we can bring down the blue primary hue, which will give the blue colors more of an aqua color tone. But of course, that's totally up to you. I think it looks quite nice. Let's see, maybe I'm going to bring up the saturation just a little bit. But I think that should be it for the colors. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's do that. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking. And of course we want to increase the amount of sharpening. Done. That's the image after just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments with the artificial fog added using masks and negative dehaze. Of course, for this image, this effect is very, very subtle, but you can place it on any kind of images if the landscape is fitting and you can get great, very natural looking effects doing it that way. So I hope this Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.